Welcome back to the channel everybody. We're out here on an extremely windy and uh, quite chilly day. It's not above freezing. I think we've got mid 20s or something and about 30, 40 mile an hour winds maybe. So we're jumping out into the greenhouse here. We are gonna go check out our solar geothermal. We had some issues with it this spring. We ended up getting it fixed and we want to talk to everybody about the issues we had and about the geothermal in general. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all we do here on our channel and on our homestead is a whole bunch of free, cheap, and easy DIY self-sufficiency ideas. So as you can see, things have been changing. I've got myself a new outlet. This is the only outlet I have in my greenhouse. It is the first outlet I've had in my greenhouse. So three years, three and a half, four years later, however long it's been, I only needed one because I'm going to run a simple fan with a timer and possibly experiment with some easy to use LED lights and low use, low energy lights. So I really don't want to have any type of expenditure really. If I can keep it under like $10, $20 a month, that would be my max for what I want to spend to power anything into this greenhouse. So it's took a little while to get everything dug up, but we finally got some electricity here, a nice GFI outlet, all protected, all the way up, nice and solid here. We'll go check outside real quick here. Whew, it's chilly. So we've got our solar power coming out, and then we ran our line all the way over, and you can see where it comes up and into the garage there. So now we've got ourselves some electricity that we can work with inside the greenhouse here. So let's check out the next project here. I think everybody's gonna find this interesting, and I'm not really gonna talk too much. I'm not gonna show a whole lot on it. 100-pound toolbox here, not trip over while filming. And we've got this new exchanger. All types of goodies together here to get this whole system running, the box and everything, all that's together. So I thought something was making noise on me. We've got two little rodents here. So that is why I set this trap up. It is literally just working all the time. Our peanut butter's all gone off this old Pringles container, but I'll just throw a little bit of stuff in here. You can see that they're literally eating the kale. He's trying to jump up and bite me. So we're gonna release these guys way outside the greenhouse. So those are probably mouse number five and six for the entire fall here. We really haven't had a whole lot that we've caught. So there could be more, I really don't know, but that trap works wonders. And like I said, it works while I'm not out here. So that's when the mice are gonna be out and everything's going to be trying to eat my stuff is when I'm not out here and not active and scaring them off. So having those bucket traps in your greenhouse or right outside the greenhouse is a great idea. It might seem silly, but they really, really work. Especially if you're having issues with rodents. You can pretty well catch them all just with one single bucket trap there. So I'm gonna pop down and set the camera up. We're gonna talk about all of this geothermal here. So here we sit with our geothermal tube and it is blowing air out it's pulsing it feels kind of cold because I'm used to all of the compost heated air which is pulsing out also and that is about 80 degrees coming out of there right now so it's blowing 80 degrees in while this is steadily pushing 50 out so bottom of the greenhouse is about 50 top of the greenhouse is about 80 both of those systems running together are pretty flawless so I'll probably just continue to have both of these for as long as I have this greenhouse running because they're not really negating each other that much and they do really help me both in their own ways so you can see I had this tube here and you can see this Y so this Y was plugged into the actual tube you see coming out of the ground here and I split that off each way one to this side and one to this side of the greenhouse and both of those ran to their own tunnels and I had tunnels on each side and I kind of switched things up this year just based off observations from last winter with beds that had heat beds that were covered and beds on both sides of the greenhouse so things are always moving around just based on findings and observations so that being said I want my geothermal routed to this side of my greenhouse and this side only so we are going to use some of the same parts and we're just going to route it over to these beds so I can blow it and split it once it gets inside the bed to blow to each end of the greenhouse all the way down and through these beds. So what happened? Our geothermal filled up with water and that happened because of my design error because I had this split right here. This Y and the split is the reason that I had that water in the first place. So let me explain. I had filled all of these beds up. We didn't have our 
pond over here. All of these beds were up and raised up, built up. So our walkway was the lowest point. So as I was flooding beds and as I have things break and run experiments, we drain 110 gallons of water on accident. And come springtime, we were doing the same thing. We're always draining water out. And one time that we drained it, all of the water made its way out of the bed and didn't soak straight down and it came out into the middle of this walkway and as it made it into the walkway our geothermal is dug straight up all the way back over to our bench over here so that runs down at an angle from our bench all the way down to seven and a half eight feet and then runs parallel seven and a half eight feet all the way till right before this and then it shoots straight up shoots right up here out of the outlet so this is where the water was making its way in so all of our soil is so compacted and so hard and it was pretty darn dry that it made it almost hydrophobic to the point where it just washed it down and it was finding the path of least resistance and this break in our tube was the path of least resistance because this wasn't pointed up it was running at a parallel angle to the ground coming up and splitting off and it was subsoil filled back in and yes we walked all over it and packed it back in but the soil that I didn't dig when I originally dug this geothermal up was so hard still that it just funneled all the water right to the center and down to this point here. It was pretty fascinating to figure it out. It took me a while to figure out what actually happened and it took me even longer to get all of the water out of this thing. So we basically went through and threw a whole bunch of string down here and ropes and I ended up taking a couple towels and tying them on a piece of PVC and it took me a few weeks to actually dry this all the way. So the most effective method was using strings to basically just pull it out like a natural draw it's just going to slowly draw it out and as the geothermal is blowing we have all of the air that was directed into our stove we have a fresh air intake on our stove that we redirected to be our intake for our geothermal so it was pulling all the dry air from outside or drier air from outside as opposed to the humid air from inside the greenhouse and it was blowing it through and it was drying some of that water up down there alongside all of the towels and all of the other stuff we had to do. We basically had to create our own little system to get down in there because it wasn't a straight shot. I didn't want to use an actual drain snake because I didn't want to break this this stuff is pretty darn durable and it is tough. It's not crushed. It's flowing 100% right now. But the fact that they have metal tippets, I really didn't want to use that. I could have tied a rope around it, but I ended up using PVC to get down there with a couple towels and I pulled them out, wrung them out, did that about 15, 20 times. And we made a lot of progress with that. And mind you, I did use a pump when I first started because there was a lot of water. I pumped maybe five, six, seven gallons of water out of there. And then we had all the water sitting right at the Point where it was coming up so it was kind of just gurgling so all of the latter stuff that I had stated is how we got the rest of the water out of there and then we had a few weeks of just letting this dry up and now we are a hundred percent flow again and I want to talk about the flow rate now we're just using simple solar fans we're gonna go check that out in a minute here we're using a simple little 12 volt waterproof solar fan that has lasted for over three years now running this system right here so that is longevity right there we've basically reduced our cost to zero or less than pennies so we're not spending anything really powering this geothermal and providing constant heat to our greenhouse so saying this is free heat I'm gonna agree with that this is basically free heating right here or free constant climate control heat or cool it's going to blow the same temps no matter what you're putting into it now like I said this was hand dug seven and a half to eight feet down and if I had to do this again I wouldn't do it again it was brutal digging all this by hand once I built the greenhouse and if I had to do it again I would obviously do it before I built the greenhouse over top this would be one of the first things built in with the foundation so if you're going to do this and you're going to do it outside the greenhouse I would suggest going 10 feet or deeper we got away with seven and a half to eight feet because we're insulated all the way on each side and deep down we have this greenhouse on top so it really protects the soil that you're using and it allowed us to use this geothermal at those depths and using about 50 60 maybe 70 feet of tubing one single tube and we're able to pull good temps up here and let's talk about how much air we're circulating and how long it takes to circulate the air in this entire greenhouse so first off I did get this running before I got my Jean Payne compost heater up and active and built and all of that energy put into that situation down there so I did dedicate quite a bit of time to getting this cleaned out because I knew how pertinent it was this is what saved us through the last couple weeks here we had a little Indian summer for the last week and that was really nice but 
but nighttime temps and before and after that they are pretty darn cold we're seeing teens and mid 20s and stuff and the highs are in the 20s and 30s for the next outlook so the temps are going down and i wanted to get this set up before that because this is really going to keep the ground temps a stable 50 degrees no matter even if i have a door open for a little bit during the day it's still going to keep those temps nice and solid the cold temps were stayed off by this geothermal and that's because we're able to circulate all of this air in the greenhouse we're pushing between 70 and 80 cubic feet per minute with this little fan so with 70 to 80 cubic feet per minute and this greenhouse being 3800 to 3900 square feet ish we're able to circulate every cubic foot of air in this greenhouse in about 48 minutes that's really quite amazing to be able to circulate the whole volume of this greenhouse in about an hour and if we had more tubes and more fans we really wouldn't need any other circulation of heat we would be able to use just geothermal strictly and I have a feeling we'd be able to get away with just geothermal alone if we had a little bit more to our system and that just goes to show that it is super beneficial in the winter time and in the summer if you're going to use it for your house you can blow it right through the wall of your basement right up through the house or something and circulate cold air all the time it's very interesting to be able to use those passive temperatures from the soil and the, the climate battery of the earth that's kind of in line with our next project down there we have a little sand battery that we're working with and all of the systems will pull heat off of that so stay tuned for the solar panel hookup and the experience hook up the heater experiment there's a lot coming from that end a lot coming from this end. there's a lot coming from everywhere in this greenhouse now I want to state one thing that this really aided in plant growth development and airflow of those plants and I just want to reiterate that again if that if you have geothermal try placing that to where it needs to be instead of just blowing it straight up and doing the entire greenhouse try and angle it or build up onto the system to try and get it to where it needs to be you can blow it through the tunnel get fresh air blowing through there and you have airflow it really doubles down on all of the aspects of using that geothermal and free solar to move the air now speaking of free solar let's talk about investments i always like to throw out there how much i have invested in the breakdown of how much it ends up costing and why I state that it's basically free to run. So per 100 foot of this drain tile when I bought it four years ago, it was about 60 to $70 for 100 feet. I ended up picking a 200 feet back then. So I was able to use about 75 in here. I have 100 in my compost and I have a little bit left over outside. So the little solar fans, the little simple 12 volt solar fans I'm always raving about, I spent $10 on two of them. So they were about five bucks each, but we'll say that I got two for 10. So we have, 60 we'll say $70 and then we'll put 10 on there for $80 total expenditure so the next thing that I need is a power source so a hundred watt hundred dollar solar panel kit is what we've been using and we've been using for years I mean we've had the same first original one that we put in Chicken Creek back on when we first started our channel when we first set up our DIY solar pond in our chicken area that was the same one that we're using today. We're able to recycle that and reuse it so the amount spent really gets reduced over time. But if we're putting it all in like I just went and bought this and did it right today, we've got $100 on solar power and about $80 on miscellaneous parts. So that is not bad. We're looking at $180 that's lasted me about three four years that's pretty good so 180 dollars split up over the years is pennies on the dollar we are not spending barely anything go take all of your bills from the last year add them up and it's going to be way over 180 dollars for heating anything so this is our fail safe we will always have geothermal in any type of greenhouse structure that we have because it really is that niche that allows us to do all of this and allows us to be successful because i'm a little forgetful sometimes i forget to do things i might not cover my rows but if i have a steady system that picks up the slack when i'm lacking I have pretty good luck with keeping everything alive with all of the systems I put in place. The sun comes up, they run. The batteries store energy, they run a little bit into the night. So we're trying to get better and better on this. I'm going to be building a solar array, which, which I know I'm lacking on. I said I was going to do it already, but there's been a lot of things here, there, and everywhere that we've had to get situated before we situate that. I want a nice movable solar array. It doesn't have to move much. The sun pretty much faces south or almost straight above us. So we know exactly where it's gonna be year round. So getting all of that situated isn't the big deal. 
but getting an inverter, lots of batteries, that is very expensive. I want to get this to where I can plug things in and not use completely DC power. I want to reinvent the greenhouse down on this end and run a little bit more longevity to those systems, push hot water through the champagne all night long. We can do that with a timer and that's what we're going to be doing, but we're going to be experimenting with a whole lot of different ways to better our system. There's always things changing because I'm always learning, experimenting, and expanding and sharing with you guys. So geothermal requires a little bit of investment and a lot of labor and it is well worth it. Let me tell you, as long as you do it correctly the first time, it will benefit you for years and years to come. I gotta stand up here. My knees are killing me. <laughs> We're good to be up and moving around again. Just wanna come through, check out all these little sprouts coming up. We've got new area to work here. Lots and lots of life coming up. Gonna get our geothermal ran. I will bring an update once we have this ran because we're gonna get all our tunnels done before we run the rest of the geothermal in. Everything looks great. We planted all these from seed except all these transplants. Everybody's seen all of these grow from absolutely nothing. So coming on down, you notice my water is not running. We're having an issue with the parameters on that little solar controller. I forgot to set them before I actually put it on there. So I like to mess with it so it shuts off and turns on at a certain point. So I don't want to overcharge or overuse the battery and I want to be able to get the best longevity and use it on a super cloudy day like today. We've got absolutely no sun coming through those clouds. It is pretty dark and gloomy. It looks nice and bright in the greenhouse just because it's open, no shade cloths. Looks awesome in here. Lots and lots of experiments coming down the pipe here let's go check out the actual compost heat here well looks like that bad boy's sitting at exactly 140 a little bit of water and a tarp brought it down from 165 down to 140 so I know Jean Payne heating has nothing to do with geothermal but those temperatures had to come down. We didn't want to uh, overcook that pile. We wanted to be like at the 140, 145, 150 range right in there. And we're gonna try and stay steady through the next couple months and keep an eye on it because we did not inoculate nitrogen. We're just running off fresh old wood chips and a bunch of water. So we may have to do a nitrogen dump in the middle of winter. That might be interesting. <clears throat> so I guess I'll show you what we came down here to talk about. This geothermal right here. This is constantly running. Just, you can hear it clicking on and off back there. That is the timer running through the timer that doesn't work anymore. It got fried up, but it is blowing decent air. We'll go check this out down here. You can hear that little pulsing fan all the way through there, about 75 feet of tubing through there. And I can physically feel the cool air blowing through here. It feels nice. so. It's not cold, it's not hot. It's just like steady 50 degrees. It's hard to explain. But coming in here when it's negative outside, you better believe we'll be coming in here warming our hands up on this geothermal tube. That 50 degrees feel good when it's freezing outside. So before this video gets any longer, I'm gonna let everybody go. I gotta get this work done. I'm gonna bring an update once we get the geothermal and all of these covered up. We wanna get all this plastic in here. Lots and lots of stuff to do and this little project down here just a little teaser for that one that's going to be an interesting little guy so everybody stay tuned for that one also i'd like to thank everybody for watching this video and until next time